Here's another vector. Please break this vector into components. Well, you might have noticed that the way this is different from the previous problems is that I didn't give you any numbers, just variables. Uh, that's pretty typical in physics. Very often you have to do problems with only variables and no numbers. So this is another type of problem that we have to get really good at. Well, the first step would be to draw the right triangle that shows the components. We want to use the overall vector as the hypotenuse. The leg should be parallel to the axes. Let's try to include the angle that we were given. Here's a good right triangle that shows the components. As usual, we have to put arrows on the legs, where the overall vector was pointing up and to the right. So the legs are pointing up and to the right. I hope that you've definitely got into the habit now of always putting arrows on the legs. That's a vital part of the process. Now we need to label the sides. Um, well, I think it's pretty clear that this side is V sub X, because this is the side that's parallel to the X axis. And this side is V sub Y, isn't it? Because it's parallel to the Y axis. Something I should have actually done a while ago is I should have used an asterisk to help me remember which uh, things we've been given. We were originally given V and theta. If I don't put in these asterisks, it's going to get easy now to start getting confused about which variables are givens and which variables are unknowns. Uh, if you have a problem that's all numbers, if you have a, I'm sorry, if you have a problem where there's no numbers, if you have a problem with all variables and no numbers, it's really useful at the beginning to mark the variables that were given with asterisks. That way we can see now at a glance that these two variables are unknowns and these two variables are givens. Remember that what we're supposed to do here is we're supposed to pretend that we were given numbers for V and theta. We're supposed to pretend that we were given numbers for V and theta, even though we weren't. And we're supposed to pretend that we're going to use those to find V sub X and V sub Y. Well, why don't we label it V sub X is the adjacent side. V sub Y is opposite to theta with the asterisk. And here this side is the hypotenuse. We've learned that to find the adjacent side, you take the hypotenuse and multiply it by, do you multiply it by the cosine or the sine? Well, cut. The adjacent side is tied to the cosine. Now, what's our adjacent side here? It's V sub X. But uh, that's not right, is it? The adjacent side isn't V sub X. It's V sub X with a dot, because the adjacent side just refers to the length of that side. When working with trig functions, we're just working with magnitudes. Please try to get comfortable using this notation. I think you're going to find it quite helpful over the long term. Now, our hypotenuse was V. Remember that the overall vector you can indicate with a dot or not. It doesn't matter, because the overall vector, um, there is no signed version of the overall vector. So we don't need two different symbols for that. So you can either call this V or V dot, whichever, whichever you like. OK, and now um, at this point, normally we would plug in some numbers. But we don't have any numbers to plug in. So all we can say is that the magnitude of the x component is V times cosine of theta. Now, we can't stop here because, again, we've only found the magnitude. Now we have to go on and find what V sub X is without the dot. We have to find what's the sine component. Well, we know the magnitude here is V cosine theta. And now let's figure out the sine. Well, V sub X here is pointing to the right, and our positive direction is to the right. So V sub X without the dot, the sine component, is positive V cosine theta. If there's anybody out there, uh, I, I know that you all tried this problem on your own before I went through it, before going through it with me here. Um, so um, there might be some people out there who, when you try this on your own, you might have said that this was the answer. You might have said this was the answer. But this is wrong. This is not the right answer. This is the right answer. This is a signed component. Uh, a signed component isn't really correct unless you indicate the sign. Even though it's positive, we have to indicate that with a positive sign. We don't need to indicate signs on magnitudes, but we're not done until we find the sign component, and that should have a sign. So this would be wrong. This is not the right way to answer the problem. Even though we're not working with numbers, or maybe especially because we're not working with numbers, we have to be very careful to distinguish between the magnitude of the component and the signed component. 
Remember that on this problem, we said we were going to pretend that we've been given numbers for v and theta, even though we haven't. Well, if we're pretending we've been given numbers for v and theta, we could say that if we really were given numbers for v and theta, we could now plug them into this uh, expression, and that would give us the x component. Uh, so that's the sense in which we're making that pretense. We've figured out how we would figure out v sub x if we were given v and theta. We're now all set so that if anybody actually will give us numbers for v and theta, we can figure out exactly what the number is for v sub x. Remember that you always have, uh, on this type of problem with only variables, you have to have answers that involve only the givens. So this would not be a good answer if there was a v sub y on the right hand side, because v sub y is an unknown. It's not something that we're pretending was given. We have to get an expression for this unknown that's only in terms of the original givens, v and theta. The other part of our work is to find the opposite side using the hypotenuse and the sine of theta. Now the opposite side is not v sub y, it's the magnitude of v sub y. And the hypotenuse is v. All right, so, uh, well, well, there isn't much more to do about the magnitude of the y component, is there? The magnitude of the y component is v times the sine of theta. If anyone ever tells us what v and theta are, we'll be able to figure out the magnitude of the y component. But we're not done until we figure out the sine y component. Well, the y component is pointing up, and up is our positive direction. So v sub y is positive v sine theta. Anybody who worked this out on their own and got this answer, this is wrong. This is not correct. This is correct. If you're going to write down a signed component, you've got to include a sign. Uh, it's OK to leave out the sign when you're just showing the magnitude, but then you haven't given the full answer. It's not enough to show the magnitude. When we break a vector into components, we have to show the signed components eventually. It's perfectly OK to figure out the magnitude as an intermediate step. In fact, it's a very good habit to figure out the magnitude as an intermediate step. But then you have to go to the final step and figure out the sign for the signed component. So as I said, this is wrong. This is wrong because the signed component is not v sine theta. The signed component is plus v sine theta. Otherwise, it's not really a signed component, is it? OK, so I think this is our first example of breaking a vector into components where we're only given variables and no numbers. Uh, but this is a very standard type of situation in physics. It's important that you may be able to deal calmly with a situation where you're not given any numbers. So here's a good example. 